Hello and thanks for watching this Cloud9 ERP Solutions video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. In this video we're going to talk about fixed assets, how to create a fixed asset, acquire it into the system, and then go through a depreciation cycle. So let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is the fixed asset preferences. Because there's a couple of things to note when you're going through and using your fixed assets. As you can see here, this posting settings, this applies to throughout Acumatica. We have the ability to automatically release acquisition, depreciation, disposal, and all these different types of transactions. What that means is when you fire a command on a fixed asset, for example, acquiring a new fixed asset, do you want that transaction to automatically release or do you want to go and post it yourself? The reason I bring this up is because as you're starting to work with the fixed asset system and you're not seeing numbers change or depreciation accumulated depreciation values update, it might be because you have these fixed asset transactions that are sitting out there balanced and not released. So you can change these settings as you need to. But let's get started. We're going to go into fixed assets and we'll create a new one. And you have the ability to associate a fixed asset to a parent asset. That'll show up under components. So when you're looking at the parent asset, you'll see all the components underneath it. But let's create a fixed asset for a laptop. We can give it an asset class. So asset classes are very similar to other classes in Acumatica, such as customer, vendor, inventory, item classes. And what they do is they bring in fields of information from a template. The class is kind of like a template. So for example, if we look up all of our asset classes, this is our sales demo, and we select computers, you could see some of the information is filled out for us. Now what is that? Well, let's take a look at the fixed asset class. You have a description for it. You have an asset type. There's a number of different ones here and whether or not they're tangible or depreciable items. You have a default for the useful life. You have your different depreciation methods. We're using the posting book here. And you have your default jail account. So what is that? That's our fixed asset account. That's what we're going to store our fixed asset in. You have your accumulated depreciation account. You have your depreciation expense account. If you dispose and sell your item, you'll have your proceeds account here. You have a gain and loss account for multi-currency. So if we close this fixed asset class and we continue on, you have a different property type that you can categorize. We're only acquiring one laptop. It has a useful life of five years. We'll give it a receipt date. Maybe we acquired it October 1st. And we have an original acquisition cost. So what is that? Well, we acquired it for $2,500. This is the amount that we're going to depreciate off of. $2,500 less whatever the salvage amount is. So let's say at the end of the depreciation schedule, we'll have $300 in value. And then if we had to replace it, you could put this number in there, if you had to replace it, what would it cost? It doesn't necessarily mean it's the same as you, what you acquired it for. And then we have the branch. So this is the branch we're working in. This is the department. These are two required fields. So we're putting it in the finance department. And you could fill out all these other static fields. The building is a lookup as well. The GL accounts came in from our fixed asset class. And as I mentioned before, our other info allows us to store additional information. Now, if you've seen our other video, I recommend you watch it if you want to be able to convert purchases, meaning purchase orders that have been converted into purchase receipts. They come into a asset account and then you can convert them into a fixed asset. And if you do that, you'll see all that information will show up here. You'll fill out the manufacturer model and serial number. You can do that manually. You can update the fair market value and the condition. And we have the ability for you to track 
who is the lesser if you're leasing the equipment and all that. Looking ahead, if we look at our depreciation and we select our book, you could see the depreciation schedule and the calculated and depreciated values. There's nothing here yet because we haven't removed it off hold and we haven't depreciated it, of course. Any transactions will show up here so you could see our transaction where we're going to acquire this fixed asset for $2,500. It's not released yet, but we'll do that in a second. And then we also have locations here. This will keep track of where this fixed asset is. So for example, who's the custodian? What department are you moving it to? As you go through a transfer, there's a transfer option here under fixed assets transfer. It'll create a transaction so that you can see it in different locations. So let's remove the hold and we'll save it. And if we go to fixed assets and we look at our fixed asset transactions, you can see the purchase that we just created. So here it is, the surface book and the amount and everything. And this is a fixed asset transaction we're releasing. Remember the preferences, we set it up to do this manually. So now if we go back to our fixed asset and we refresh, and we go over to transactions, you can see off to the right, there's our reference number and our batch number, journal batch number. We open it up. You can see we've debited our asset account and we've credited our fixed asset cleared account. Now, if we go to our depreciation tab and we click on calculate depreciation, you can see Acumatica is telling us what is the depreciation amounts for every book period. So you can see 3667. Now, if we go to fixed assets and we go over to this calculation depreciation, this is a process screen, and it doesn't just calculate, it gives us options to depreciate also. So we already calculated it, we don't need to do that again. But if we select our book, we can now see our Surface Book 3 laptop. We select it and click Process. What this will do is it'll depreciate up to period 11, 20, 22. So we'll click on it. And again, this has been created. However, if we go over to our fixed asset transactions, go back, you can see our depreciation entries right here. Now we've posted our fixed asset depreciations. So those transactions came in, they needed to be posted. Again, you have a preference under fixed asset preferences, you can have these automatically released. But if we go back to our fixed asset, our Surface Book 3, we go over to our depreciation. After refreshing, you can now see the depreciated amount, the 3667 for those two periods. And this will continue to accumulate every period that we run it for. You can calculate these depreciations. You can put it on a schedule so that it runs monthly and automatically depreciates. And if we go to balance, you can see our posting book here and you could see the total accumulated depreciation is adding up here. Now, when we need to dispose this, so let's say for whatever reason, we're getting rid of this laptop, getting rid of it for a number of different reasons. We could define that using the dispose. So we come over here, we say what date we're disposing it of, and we're gonna suspend this fixed asset. In terms of status, we're gonna suspend it before we dispose it. Otherwise, you could depreciate it if it's got another month or two on it. Maybe you haven't depreciated it in a few months, but you're depreciating it as of a period where there's a few month gap. You can do that as well. And we're going to get $1,500 for this. We can pick the disposal method. So what does that mean? Well, we've sold it. It's been stolen. It's been lost. It's damaged. So all of these correlate with a default revenue account or GL account whatever that GL account might be. And you can pick that. So in this case, so we'll select sold. And
and the proceeds account would change but you can also if you have the rights you can also change your account to anything you want and the sub account for that matter you can document what happened and then you'll click OK now what this has done is it's once again created a fixed asset transaction so if we go back to our fixed asset transactions and refresh you could see now there's a disposal transaction we can open it up if we need to and this shows all of the different transactions associated with disposing this so you have a transaction type of purchasing disposal so that's the gain loss of the fixed asset that's a credit to our computer and office equipment and then we have our depreciation adjustment and our sale dispose for the other income of $1,500. So we can release this. And now if we go back and we refresh our fixed asset, you can see the accumulated depreciation, of course, is zero. The net value is zero because we don't have it anymore. And we have a gain a loss of 926. We've lost because we bought it for 2500. We only had it a couple of months. That less the depreciation, that's what we're left with. If we go back to general, you can see the status has changed to disposed. If we go over to transactions, you can see all of the different transactions for the disposal as well. You have visibility there. And lastly, under depreciation, notice. Acumatic has cut it off as of this period because we no longer have this item. So that's it. That's a quick overview of fixed assets, straight line method, depreciation. We move the item to a different location. We dispose the item. We depreciated the item for a couple of periods. We moved it to a different location, as you can see. And lastly, we disposed of the item, giving us a gain loss transaction in the system. So if this was helpful, please click the like button in YouTube. If you have any questions about this or anything else, Acumatica, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again and have a great day.